Once we plugged up the hole, the temperature started to rise. We were afraid because it could have caused another explosion. It was terrifying. Scientists came to take readings. They were very worried. They were afraid the critical temperature would be reached and it would set off a second explosion. That would have been a terrible tragedy. The cement slab below the reactor core is heating up and in danger of cracking. The magma is threatening to seep through. The water the firemen poured during the first hours of the disaster has pooled below the slab. If the radioactive magma makes contact with the water, it could set off a second explosion even more devastating than the first. The country's top experts are called into action. Vasily Nesterenko was one of them. At the time, he was working on improving the Soviet Union's intercontinental nuclear missiles. If the heat managed to crack the cement slab, only 1,400 kilograms of uranium and graphite mixture would have needed to hit the water to set off a new explosion. The ensuing chain reaction could set off an explosion comparable to a gigantic atomic bomb. Our experts studied the possibility and concluded that the explosion would have had a force of 3 to 5 megatons. Minsk, which is 320 kilometers from Chernobyl, would have been raised and Europe rendered uninhabitable. We had to stop the process. If it continued, it would have been an enormous disaster, an enormous nuclear disaster. This second explosion would have been accompanied by a terrible shockwave and a massive rise in radioactivity that would have claimed thousands of lives in a matter of hours. Thank God it didn't happen. There were trains with over a thousand cars in Minsk, Gomel and Kiev ready to evacuate the population. The situation is critical. In Moscow, the State Commission decrees two emergency measures. First, send in a battalion of firemen to drain the water from under the reactor. They will later be declared national heroes 